guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're talking about all about blessings today. Blessings truly are gifts from God. From falling in love and getting married to having your first child and raising a family. Blessings come in all shapes and sizes. But have you really ever truly thought about what goes behind each blessing? And how truly miraculous it is for a blessing to happen? Today, we're gonna to find this out and a whole lot more. Let's get started. So guys, we have to realize what blessings really are. A blessing is more than just having a baby. It's more than just getting your dream job. See, what's really happening here is that God is literally warping your entire reality to make it favorable for you, i.e. to in order for you to become wealthy, to find love, to be healthy, etc. Because really think about how many factors have to go right in order for you to meet the right person at the right time, at the right place. Literally a million factors have to align for these things to occur. This is proof of how all powerful God really is. Seemingly impossible tasks are nothing for him. So what are the types of blessings that God can bestow upon you? So one of the blessings that God can give you is he can exalt you. So what does this mean? This means that he can raise your status to a much higher status, if not the highest status in society. Okay, for example, King David, he didn't start off as a prince. He started off as a shepherd boy, but God chose him to become a king. God can also bless you with good health. All right, a lot of people take this for granted. All right, at any given moment, one of us can just drop dead from a stroke, an aneurysm, maybe a car accident, right? How many of us know people that went before their time, right? We cannot take our health for granted, guys. It's a big blessing. Children. So God can also bless you with children. And again, this is something that a lot of people take for granted because how many people are, are out there that are infertile? You know, I looked up a, a statistic recently that stated that 10% of men and women cannot have children. There's no better feeling than having a child and raising that child and just giving that child all the love in the world. It's an amazing feeling. Prosperity, money. Okay guys, when God is by your side, he's gonna take care of you in all facets of your life, including money. There is this fallacy out there that I hear some religious people believe that money is a bad thing, it's evil, it's bad juju. Right? You're not gonna go to heaven if you're rich. That is false, because look at the Bible, how many people were really rich, right? King David, King Solomon, Job. Job was very righteous and he was very wealthy. He had massive farms with a lot of animals, right? So prosperity is definitely something that uh, God can and will bless you with as long as it doesn't take you away from God because obviously money, a lot of money, can get to people's heads and then essentially separate them from God. Last but not least, God's favor. What does this mean? This is good luck, really, because luck isn't a real thing. What good luck really is, is God's favor. God is favoring you to have a good reality and he's making all these factors that you can't control go your way so good things happen in your life. So guys, the best example of someone that is blessed by God that I can, I can give you is that if you know those people that no matter what they do, they succeed. And even when they don't succeed and they fall, they bounce right back to where they were, if not higher. These people are blessed by God. So guys, we have to realize that everybody enjoys blessings to some degree. But there are certain people that are favored more than others. These people are known as the chosen ones, all right? So these people are the, are the people that have a closer relationship with God as well as are of service to him. So they're trying their best to bring people to the light, expand his kingdom, etc. So these are the people that enjoy the most blessings, the most protection. So I'll give you an example. So let's talk about Abraham, okay? When God chose him to be his prophet, God said, I will bless you for generations to come. 
I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And I will bless you as a nation. So let's break this down a little bit. I will bless you for generations. So this means that when God blesses people, he blesses them for multiple generations. That means they're kids, 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 kids. So many times you're gonna notice that when you meet someone that's blessed, they come from a blessed family, i.e. their parents are blessed, their grandparents are blessed, their great-grandparents are blessed, all right? This is not by accident. This is because somewhere along the line, one of their ancestors earned God's favor for generations to come. I will bless those that bless you. All right, guys, so when, we, when we're dealing with people that we don't know, we have to be extremely careful. We have to try our best to be kind to everyone because we really don't know who has their back in the spiritual realm. If you're nice to a person and bless a person that is backed by God and is doing God's mission, has a tight relationship with them, God is going to give you favor. He's going to bless you as well with money, with good health, all that stuff. Now, curse those that curse you. God does not mess around when he takes care of his people. In the Bible, it says, do not hurt my prophets. Do not touch my anointed ones. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that he is the best of all protectors. One of the 99 names of Allah is al Muhaimin, i.e. the guardian. Okay? You're going to find a lot of times, especially if someone's cursing some, a man of God, that things don't go well for them. They end up in financial situations, they lose their jobs, they end up in car accidents, they end up getting divorced. All sorts of really bad things happen to these people. Okay, just in general, you shouldn't be cursing people, but when you curse a person of God, God's wrath will come upon you. Blessings from people. So guys, just like God can bless you, the people in your life can bless you as well. And depending who it is, the more weight that blessing has. So we have to remember guys that in the household, according to God, it goes God, then the father, the mother, then the children. So this means obviously God's blessings carry the most weight, but then you have the father right next on the hierarchy. One cannot have a prosperous and fruitful life without a father's blessing. This is talked about in the Bible, i.e. Isaac's blessing to Jacob to, uh, to be successful and, and be the, the heir to, to Israel, okay? When it comes to marriage, in many cultures, if not all of them, all across the world, you cannot get married without a father's blessing, okay? This, doesn't, this, this didn't come out of nowhere. This, this is because spiritually speaking, a marriage that is not blessed by the father is doomed to fail. Serious stuff, guys. It, it doesn't just necessarily have to be with, with marriages. So if you're a father, listen to this, I'm talking to you guys. So if you're a father, please make sure that you bless your children as much as possible. If they're if they're not so smart or if they're not so athletic, don't curse them and, and tell them, you're not smart, you're not athletic, you're never gonna do well. Don't do that, please. Okay, you are literally cursing your flesh and blood. You need to tell them, you're gonna get better. I believe in you. I know you're smart. I know you're athletic. Let's just work on it. Okay, you're gonna get to these places. You're gonna, you know, shoot for the stars, right? You're gonna make it to the NFL. You're gonna make it to the NBA. You're gonna, Make it to Harvard. If you have a daughter, let her know she's beautiful. Let her know she will get married and find love. The worst thing you could do if you're a father is tell your daughter she's not beautiful. She's not worthy of love. She's never gonna find love. Because once again, you're cursing her and that will become her reality. If you bless her, that will become her reality eventually. Okay, because 
your words, especially if you're a father, carry so much weight that it, can, it, it literally is going to warp your child's reality for the future. But you have to realize the power of your words. And I'm not just talking father, I'm just talking in general, guys. We need to start blessing the people that we love. So religious leaders also can bless you and their blessings carry a whole lot of weight. Definitely a lot more than the average person. So this could be like a priest, it could be an imam, it could be a sheikh, all that stuff. So these people are obviously they're men of God. They have divine decree. So when they bless you, they pray on your behalf for God to, to bless you or turn around your luck to, to go from a curse to, to a blessing. Everyday people can bless you as well. So the people in your life that are like, you know, your friends, your acquaintances, strangers walking on the street, so they can bless you as well and they do carry weight. So for example, let's say someone says, God bless you after a nice interaction with them. Uh, this is a blessing and this could very well, much so, manifest into something favorable for, for you as well as good luck, right? You go into a situation, maybe a competition or a job interview and someone's telling you good luck. This could also bring about good luck and, uh, and bring you favor from God. But the key is it needs to be sincere. It needs to be from the heart, okay? If it's sincere, it's going to be blessed from the soul and then it has power. If it's not sincere, it's like, oh, good luck. And then, you know, or, God bless you. You know, like, if they don't really mean it, it's might as well say nothing at all. Ah, choo! Bless you. Thank you. Have you guys ever wondered why people say God bless you every time you sneeze? So this actually stems from a belief in the Middle Ages. So in the Middle Ages, people used to believe that when you sneezed, your soul would be expelled from your body for a moment in time and would leave you vulnerable for evil spirits to come back in. So when they say God bless you, it was to bring your soul back in as well as protect you from evil spirits. Guys, if you're loving this blessed knowledge that I'm imparting for you, please like, comment, and subscribe. A whole lot of research goes into these videos and at the end of the day, I'm trying to help people. So God bless y'all, peace. Nations can be blessed as well. In the Bible, God states, I will set you on high above all the other nations and no nation shall overtake you because you hearken the voice of the Lord. And so Israel was a powerhouse for hundreds of years in the Middle East back in its peak, right? The United States was founded on God's principles and look how it flourished for the last 300 years. El Salvador was a country that many people forgot about. You know, for 30 years, it was overtaken, infested with gang violence. But in three short years, it went from the murder capital of the world to one of the safest in the world because President Bukele is a God-fearing man fighting crime and corruption. It's, uh, it's nothing short of a miracle. A just ruler. What a truly amazing thing to witness. Signs are about to receive a massive blessing. All right, guys, so. When God is about to bless you, there are certain things to look out for to let you know that a blessing is about to come your way, if, of course, you do the right things. So, number one is you're going to be tested. In the Bible, God tested Abraham with the life of his son. To He, he told Abraham, I need you to sacrifice your firstborn child. Abraham was about to do it. God stopped them because he passed the test and he ended up becoming a prophet for God, right? And, and blessing him for, for, for generations to come. Okay, so obviously that's extreme, but God will put you to the test to see if you obey God's, God's word, really, his commandments. Number two, you're tempted, all right? So God is gonna have Satan tempt you with, with certain things and you need to pass those temptations, all right? Like for example, Jesus, when he went out to the desert, fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, Satan materialized and he showed up to, to Jesus and he said, if 
you work for me and you worship me, you're going to rule over all these kingdoms. And Jesus said, nah, I only worship the Father, right? So depending on your personality, you're going to be tempted with, with several things. Let's say your problem's lust. Satan's going to tempt you with either good looking women or good looking men, depending on what you like. Your weakness is greed. He's going to tempt you with, with money to see if, whether or not you steal, if you're, on, if you're an honest person, things of that nature. Number three, trials and tribulations. When you're about to receive a massive blessing, a lot of times previous to that, you're going to go through a lot of bad stuff. Okay, so in the book of Job, in the Bible, Job lost his health. He was very sick. He lost his children. They all passed away. And he lost his wealth. He lost all his money. Even after all that happening, he still kept his faith. And then God blessed him for multiples of whatever he lost. Right? So this is going to happen in your life as well. Just know that if you're going through hard times, probably, especially if you're a person of God, you're going to be followed up with a massive blessing. Just, you got to keep the faith. Number four, ISO mode, i.e. isolation mode. So this is, uh, this is biblical. So when Jesus went out to the desert, he stayed there by himself for 40 days, 40 nights while fasting. Okay. And obviously when he came back, he was a new man and we all know what he ended up doing when he came back. So this is also uh, indicative of what happens in your life when God is about to bless you and level you up. Okay. You're going to go into isolation mode, uh, whether or not you want it. And sometimes it's force, you know, you want to hang out with people. They don't want to hang out with you for what, and you think it's, it's you, it's not you, it's God. God wants to separate you from these people because you have, you have stuff to work on. Number five, dreams. So a lot of times God is going to show you your blessings in your dreams before they happen. So for example, Solomon's dream. King Solomon, when he was when he was first became king, he had a dream where God showed up to him and he spoke to him. He said, Solomon, I'm going to bless you, but you have to tell me what you want to be blessed with. What is your, your wish, essentially? And then Solomon, he didn't choose money. He didn't choose a long life. He chose wisdom. God loved this answer so much Right, he ended up blessing him with money and a long life and wisdom anyways, right? So, and this uh, obviously was a prophetic dream to Solomon. So, same thing with you guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had prophetic dreams where you received money, for example. People gave you money, right? Or maybe you, you had a dream where you were pregnant and then you ended up getting pregnant. These are very common, by the way. So, these are things to look out for. Top signs right here. How to receive more blessings. All right, guys. So if you want to receive more blessings, there are certain things that you can do to receive more of God's favor. All right. So number one is obeying God's word. This means specifically obeying the scriptures, i.e. the Bible, the Quran, the, the, the Torah, the Old Testament. Okay. Because when you obey God's word, obviously it's not easy. It's not easy to be a righteous person. So in return, God rewards you with blessings, i.e. more money, good health, things of that nature. Number two, obeying God's voice, i.e. your intuition. All right, so when you hear a little voice telling you to do the right thing, like call your parents, help out your friend, give money to the homeless, this is God hearkening his voice to you, guiding you to the right direction to make the right decisions to go down the straight path. All right. So when you do this, when you listen to God's voice, his, your intuition, he's going to also give you blessings. Number three, give to charity, i.e. zakat. So when you give to charity, guys, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that giving to charity and give money to the homeless is like giving uh, a goodly loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you give him a loan, he's going to pay you back three, four, five, tenfold what you gave to this charity or to this homeless person. All right. So cheat code right there, guys. If you want to receive blessings, please make sure that you're giving money 
to the church, to the mosque, to, to homeless people. Okay? Because God loves that. Number four, pray as often as you can. When you pray as often as you can, i.e. you're calling, you're literally calling God and speaking to him, you're going to build that relationship with him. Okay? And when, obviously, you know, think about when you call your parents or call your friends. The more often you call someone, the closer you are to them. Okay? You have a really close relationship. So if you're calling someone five times a day, you're going to be so close to them. They're going to know everything about you. And it's going to be a, a very fruitful relationship. It's the same thing with God. If you pray to him five times a day and update him and, and ask for repentance and ask for blessings, he's a lot more likely to, to listen to your prayers because you're putting in the work to, to build that relationship with him. Number five, fasting. When you fast, it's like, it's like a superpower. When you fast, especially when you fast and you pray, it adds so much more weight to your prayer because when you're fasting, you're starving your flesh, you're feeding your spirit, and you're, you're getting closer to, to God's characteristics. Right? Because God, as we all know, is free of all needs. He doesn't eat, he doesn't drink, he doesn't need to do the things that humans do because he is free of all needs. Right? And God, of course, knows that it's hard for us to fast, especially if it's a dry fast. So again, in reward to that, he's going to give us blessings and also listen to our prayer a lot more. Last but not least, guys, another cheat code is be kind and be grateful for the things that God has blessed you with. Okay? So when I say be kind is be kind to everyone. Because like I mentioned earlier, you don't know who this person is affiliated with in the spirit realm. Okay, God has many chosen people all across the world, and they look they look like they, they look at average people. All of them, not all of them, but a lot of them look like really average people you would never know. All right, so if you're kind to them, God is going to bless you, and just in general, if you're kind to everyone, God is going to give you a lot of blessings. Also, when you're grateful, you know the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions that that He loves it when people are grateful. In response to being grateful, He's going to give you even more blessings. And when you're not grateful, he takes away blessings. Okay, guys? So when you're praying to God, make sure to say, thank you, God, for such and such blessing. True, he knows what our thoughts are, but it means so much more to him if we actually say it out loud. Please, please, please be grateful because I promise you, your blessings are going to multiply just from that simple gesture. How to keep your blessings. So, guys, you have to remember that. God can give you blessings, of course, but he can also take away blessings if we don't act right. We have to be really cognizant of our actions and the potential consequences that come from these actions. All right? So <clears throat> the best way to keep your blessings is what I call the four R's, which is recognize, repent, renounce, and resist. All right, so recognize, we got to recognize our sins. We got to recognize our faults our shortcomings, and then we have to repent to God, i.e. seeking his forgiveness and re regretting, essentially, what we did, and then renouncing what we did, i.e. making a promise to God that we won't do it anymore. Problem is, with a lot of people, is they'll repent, and it'll be like a half repent. It's be like, oh, I'm sorry, God, and they'll keep doing it, and willingly doing it as well. Okay, it does not work like that, guys. We have to actively try to do better. Last one, resist. Okay, just because you've defeated a certain sin in your life does not mean that Satan's just gonna give up. Right? It's not like, uh, oh, so and so is not falling for, for lust anymore. I'm just gonna give up for the rest of his life or her life. Does not work that way. He's gonna come at you from every angle when you least expect it, all right? So we gotta try to resist. Now, if you do these four R's, you're gonna do really well. You're gonna definitely receive God's favor because it's hard, very, very, very difficult to maintain a righteous lifestyle and to continue repenting or renouncing all that stuff because no one's perfect and he knows that. Some biblical examples of what I'm talking about. So King Saul, 
God blessed him, raised him up to be a king of Israel, the first king of Israel. And he, he let it get to his head, right? He started disobeying God's commandments, multiple commandments, by the way. And on top of that, he was idolizing himself. He started building monuments of himself. And God really didn't like this and took away his blessings and his Holy Spirit from Saul. So on the contrary, we have King David, who by all accounts really messed up. He committed adultery by sleeping with Bathsheba. He murdered her husband by killing him. That's murder and adultery. Those are two of one, two of the most major sins that you can, you can commit. All right, so obviously God was super unhappy with David, but you know the difference between Saul and David is that David realized he messed up and he fully repented, fully renounced what he did. Like he got into his into his prayer gown, he uh, he prostrated before God, and he he was in he was in tears because he knew how badly he messed up, but he ended up kept keeping his blessings. He remained king of Israel till he passed away. Right, so this is the key difference here, guys. Is we gotta repent and renounce. When God gives you a lot of blessings, i.e., a lot of money, gives you children, love, good health, don't do not let it get to your head, because otherwise you're gonna end up like like Saul ended up, and you don't want to end up in that position. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's Proverbs. So this is actually one of my favorite verses in the Bible because this verse is essentially telling you that through the power of your words, you can quite literally change people's destiny for the better or for the worse, okay? People need to wake up, okay? We need to wake up as society and stop cursing each other. You know, it's so common for people just to talk smack to each other, to each other's face and to gossip say things behind their back, it's way too common. And we need to flip this around, guys. When you start blessing each other to each other's face and bless each other when no one's around, okay? Because these words have power and they carry a whole lot of weight, all right? Especially if you're a father, especially for our family members and the people we love. We need to bless them, all right? And once this starts happening, I guarantee you, that you personally are gonna see a huge shift in not only your life, but the life of the people that you love. All right? Let's start blessing each other. God bless you. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. This video is dedicated to my family. I love you very much. God's biggest blessing in my life is having you be a part of it. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.